Well, I, I don't think there's any dispute that the number of or the percentage of out-of-staters is higher at both Berkeley and UCLA. In fact, the university has, uh, by its own measure, decided to cap the amount in those two schools. And those schools get a, a huge number. UCLA gets more freshman applications than any other university in, in the country. So these problems are systemic to a degree, but they're isolated at individual campuses. That's why this chart, which is included in your packet, shows divergent acceptance rates, sometimes 20% higher for non-residents. And it also shows that the acceptance rates bounce around from year to year. And so if you look at a particular school, say Irvine, you'll find that in 2010, they had a, an acceptance rate of 45% for in-staters. By 2015, it dropped to 33%. At the same time, the out-of-state acceptance rate was 47 at the beginning in 2010. By 2015, it was up to almost 61%. So this was cause for concern why the percentage of out-of-staters were being accepted at a, at a growing rate, while the number of California applicants were being rejected at a higher rate. The auditor's report comes up with additional data that's not available to us, and that pertains to the GPAs of the grade point averages of those who are being admitted. University of California has traditionally said that the GPA is the most important measure. But in this chart, which you also have in the packet, it shows that over a 10-year timeline, in each year, the five years, and it's, it's in the actual report, you have three of them replicated here, that every school in the UC system admitted non-residents with a higher composite GPA than residents. By the time you get to 2014-15, it flip-flops, and the non-residents are being admitted with lower GPAs than the California students. These are causes for concern, and there's a feeling that's been addressed to Senator Runner's office by many parents and students that there's not a level playing field. If we could have you respond, I noted you're shaking your head about GPAs. My understanding is that there are, that the university has like 15 criteria for admitting, 14, excuse me, for admitting a student. Would you respond to those concerns? Yeah, absolutely. And, for, and, and, and believe me, we don't, for a moment at the university, underestimate um, the importance of the issue that, that's gotten raised from the auditor's report and, and, and others as well. But here are the facts. GPA is not the most important uh, a criterion for admission. I defy the auditor or anybody else to find in our documents that says it is. We do use GPA, it, it, it's a misunderstanding. I can go into the technical reasons, but in the auditor's report, they essentially switch out GPA for high school for GPA in college. GPA in college is the way in which we define the success of our admissions program. I won't go any farther, but the plain fact of the matter is 14 criteria, comprehensive review, and that's how we review uh, students for admission. Uh, the auditor looked at precisely two. Uh, uh, the gentleman is correct when he does see fluctuations in the GPA, but as we explained at the last hearing as well, there's some very good reasons for that. Again, I could go into excruciating de detail if you'd like. Um, the reason is, is because Californians actually have greater access to honors, AP, and IB courses, and the GPA calculation that they used in the audit report was essentially cherry-picked to essentially make us look bad. I do have data for the SAT, which does not appear in the auditor's report, um, which shows very consistently um, that on average, um, out-of-state uh, international students have to hit a higher bar. Why is the SAT more important? The SAT is more important because it's the same test around the world. Um, the GPA is calculated differently from school to school, and students have different access to different kinds of courses. A student can get a 4.7 GPA, and I thought as a student, 3.5 was pretty darn good. I wouldn't have a shot at, uh, at being admitted these days. 
And I would add one other thing. Uh, it, is, it is also... Uh, okay, I don't want to go back to school, but okay. I mean, I'm just saying that that... <laughs> yeah, I, I wouldn't get close to it as well. Um, uh, we, we've also seen as well, and I, and I take the point of Senator Leno and uh, Senator Morlock and, and you as well, that, that in, this, in this period of time, applications to the university have increased significantly, while the number of seats has stayed the same. So what they're also quoting is basic arithmetic, um, that in fact, the, the ability to admit students gets lower when you have the same number of slots, but a lot more people being admitted. So what we've done in partnership with you, uh, again, and I will repeat, uh, uh, is that we're going to admit 5,000 more California residents because of this partnership. We're going to increase the admissions rate that's already up eight percentage points, and I'm not even done with all the applications yet. Um, and we are going to have a very diverse class. We are capping the number of non-residents at the places for which uh, uh, other uh, groups feel is, is, is important. And we've cut the rate of growth in half. So I think we're addressing all of these issues because we do understand that they're important and critical and must be addressed. And in fact, we are doing that. I'm not sure a constitutional amendment is needed to achieve it. Thank you. Uh, any other questions? Senator Leno. Uh, Senator Huff, I did hear you clarify what you mean by priority and also by residence. So, if I understood you correctly, with regard to the question I asked about an undocumented student raised and schooled in California, if that student is a resident, has been a resident of California, that's what you mean by resident. Good. But I didn't yet understand what prioritize means so for, uh, relative to the con proposed constitutional amendment. So would it mean that, again, uh, all things being equal between in-state and out-of-state, this would require that California prioritize, you see, prioritize the in-state. Another potential definition of prioritize could mean that before any out-of-state students could even be considered, every qualifying California student would have to be admitted first. And so we could potentially, if that's a definition of priority, and I don't know how it is defined here, uh, we could have 0% out-of-state. Right, and I, uh, the last part is um, something I had not contemplated. I figured it, you know, you are concurrently admitting some highly qualified out of state, so it's not everybody first and then the other. And I'm certainly, as I said before, willing to work to nail that down because I recognize litigation could come on the definition of priority. Uh, just as a suggestion, I think the entire proposal here hinges on the meaning of that word. Mm -hmm. Good. Yeah, yeah. Madam Chair, Mr. Fennessy could add something just to that. Sure, if sure. please, if you would, sir. If it's uh, included in your packet, uh, Berkeley, for, for the first time that we could find this year, published their statistics in terms of admission. And what they did is they showed that the, uh, the admit rate for California residents which is at the bottom of this page, is 19.5%. For other states, is 17%. For international, was less than 9%. And then they get into the numbers. And in each instance, at least for 2015, Berkeley admitted a class that included out of staters and international students who had better numbers, higher numbers, in every category. So this would have satisfied the substantial requirements as contemplated in SA 12. If every school in the system could do this, it would assure the public that they were admitting a class where the out-of-staters had numbers that were at least marginally higher than the in-staters. So this would seem to demonstrate a preference for California students. And then just a closing comment. Please. Senator Huff, I would not argue with you. Uh, I think your motivation for being here today w with the constitutional amendment, it concerns me very much. I imagine it concerns probably all of our colleagues that we're not admitting more California students. Uh, at the same time, given our own significantly diminished support of general fund for the university, There clearly is a motivating factor for the university if in some hard decision making to go with the one that's going to bring so much more 
resources to the system. Uh, I concur with you, Madam Chair. That the, I understand that a constitutional amendment for an entity that we cannot direct to do anything because they are independent of us uh, might seem to be the only way to go. But I think that when we pass not only just a resolution, we could even put in statute that it is our intent that, and then we spell out what the direction is, define, prioritize, and, and, and other some of the details we've been discussing. I don't know that the university can ignore it. And if, after some years, if they did, I think we might want to amend, potentially, uh, the Constitution. But there are so many variables here. To deal with it in a constitutional amendment is troublesome for me. So I, I get why you're here and, and why we all want to see how can we and where do we find the money to be able to sustain more California students being accepted to the system. Uh, but I will not be able to support the constitutional amendment today. Thank you. Senator Morning. Thank you, Madam Chair. And thank you, uh, Senator, for bringing this forward uh, as a proud graduate of UC Berkeley and, and having a constituent university in Santa Cruz. This is very important to me. And, and, and I just, without repeating everything uh, my colleague, Senator Leno, has just stated, I do associate myself with some of his concerns in comments. I do believe that while we respect the autonomy of the University of California, um, in recent years, largely driven by budget challenges, there's been greater engagement in negotiated agreements, particularly in this area. And as, as we heard in today's hearing, a commitment of the university to increase undergraduate admissions by 5,000 resident uh, admissions by uh, uh, a concrete number, that the subject of negotiations and, and budget uh, priorities. But I share the concern as well, how the real devil in this, how do you define prioritize? And if you take that to an extreme, if we pri there, there is a richness I think nobody would deny to the diversity of university campuses, both out-of-state diversity and international diversity. Obviously, your objective is to make sure we're not cutting Californian students and families short in that process. It seems like it's front and center in the negotiations between the state and the university. Um, and so I will not be able to support the bill today, but I think just the very fact that we have this vehicle to advance the conversation, I think we can look in numbers of freshman admissions for this coming fall, and we're already going to see that prioritization reflected. So thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Senator Morlock. Thank you, Madam Chair. I, I'd like to see this move forward. I'd like to see Senators Runner and Huff work with Mr. Uh, Handler, Handel with his suggested changes. So I'll, I'll, move the, uh, I'll move the item, Madam Chair. Thank you. Um, any further debate? All right, I'd like to kind of wrap it up. Uh, this is an SCR. Um, SCA rather, and um, it doesn't need to, it, it's not under the same time constraints. I also have some really serious concerns about doing this in the context of a constitutional amendment. I think perhaps legislatively, um, we can make our feelings and position known, and I think we all share the goal of making sure that our California students and define resident to mean our California students, which is still unclear, and talk about priorities. Um, and, and work this so that we accomplish the goal. If the goal truly is to make sure that we prioritize however we define it, make sure that our best and our brightest have the chance to go to UC uh, and are not, as I think um, was suggested, that, uh, that we were selling at market price our uh, students. And I, I, I don't necessarily share that, although I do share some concerns as we increase out-of-state students. Um, as a greater percentage, and yet it's still so much less than I suspect most 
uh, other schools. You know, it's the pride of California. We all want our children, if they do well, to be able to go there and not lose out to students from other states and nations because they'll pay more. That, I think, is anathema to the spirit of our university system. But that being said, uh, and I will ask Senator uh, Huff if he would consider uh, both holding on to this and having further discussions with the university because it sounds like, and we know that Berkeley is considered the flagship or one of them along with UCLA and, and a certainly uh, UC uh, Santa Cruz and certainly UCSB, my school, um, as uh, you know, the flagships of our educational system and probably UCSD, I don't want to offend anybody, Santa Cruz, these are all one Wonderful schools, um, and uh, but clearly when we see that Berkeley has uh, taken this to heart, and the statistics for 2015 sound pretty well consistent with the with the master plan and the goals, and I think the uh, what you're seeking in this uh, constitutional amendment, um, we really could. Uh, continue this discussion and consider again something in a more legislative form. I'm very leery of constitutional amendments. Once they pass, they're very hard to, to change and legislation we can always tweak uh, if we need to, if we see it's not going well. But it, it sounds like the university is paying attention and um, I would like to ask Senator Huff if you would consider holding this and continuing the conversations with the, uh, the University of California to define some of these terms, to clarify this, uh, and then also perhaps to consider doing this legislatively uh, so that we can give uh, the university some direction without frankly sort of um, biting ourselves uh, in the backside if, if we end up with something that at the end of the day is, is not befitting the finest public university system in the country, which I think we're all very proud of and should be. So if you would answer that in your close. Thank you, Madam President, uh, Chair. And uh, I'll take you serve both roles, so it kind of <laughs> confuses me at times. Um, I appreciate you giving me flexibility to present this first also, as it's kind of unusual that I'm presenting this and not Senator Runner. And I appreciate the thoughtful conversation, the comments that have been made in, um, you know, the UC system is a great system. And um, we have cut the budget significantly. Back when I was in the assembly, the statistic was actually a little bit below 5% that we were admitting from out of state and out of country in an assembly presentation that I had. Maybe that was an anomaly that year, but it's significantly grown by 10% since that time. And we understand why. And I certainly don't begrudge them, in fact, in that, committee hearing, I was suggesting they may want to admit more outside students. So the problem is, at what level is enough enough? And it is, we set up the UC system as this independent um, branch, and we carry some budgetary stick as long as we, you know, are appropriating money. I was surprised that Article 9, Section 9 of the Constitution deals with the regents, but doesn't address an express requirement that they admit California students. I mean, you just assume something named UC California is going to admit California students. So it, it does sort of become philosophical. Um, and it's not philosophical to the students that don't get the schools they want or don't get in. But at some level, what's outside, what's inside, how, where do you give weight to? Other states certainly are higher for various reasons of out of state. But um, in 2011, the UC system did relax their standards for non uh, residents to, they only had to compare favorably. And I don't know what these 14 criteria are. We found that they're not SATs or necessarily grades, but there's a broad band of, you know, something that constitutes what the ideal student is. And maybe it'd be nice if there's transparency on that. And I recognize, and I can count as well as an next person, um, that this is going to struggle as a constitutional amendment today. I did meet with the UC earlier and acknowledge some of the issues raised by Senator Leno and I'm happy to work with them. And uh, I appreciate the motion by uh, Senator Morlock, but I am happy, well, happy may be the wrong term. I'm willing to uh, hold this in committee as we work on it and see if this is the best vehicle or as a statute um, in perhaps even budgetary trailer bill. Thank you, Senator Huff, and your response is greatly appreciated, as was the debate and discussion, and I think the university is clear that we are concerned about uh, this, and I uh, am confident that it will be addressed. Thank you, Thank you very much.